Thank you so much for tuning in today. We have an amazing guest. She has been doing this agenting life for kids for seven years. Let's welcome Laura Feed from DDO. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And you know, the good news is for me is I don't know you. So I get to just find out all about you right now. So it's very exciting to me. And I think I want to gear this towards uh, parents of kids because yeah, they really need to know a lot of the ins and outs of this business that they don't know. Yes. So, hi, Laura. And let's just start with, tell us about DDO and um, the experience being there. And there's adult department, youth department, and you are the youth department, yes? Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, I've been at DDO for seven years now. Um, I started as an assistant back in, in the day when I first came, um, and they didn't really have a, a kids division at the time when I started. Um, the, I was assisting an agent who was doing, a, who was doing adult commercial print, um, and he had a few kids, um, but it wasn't something that they necessarily advertised, or it wasn't a separate kids division. He had some kids that he was repping that were children of the adults that he was repping, Mm -hmm. um kind of situation so yeah uh basically eventually I grew from there and started doing kids commercials and then um realized that we really needed to do theatrical as well if we were going to be competitive um and get the best kids and so then started doing theatrical and then um from there we kind of got bigger and I it was too much for me by myself so then we added um Brie Curtis who came over um, from BBR to do kids commercials. And then we also added Alicia Beekman who came over from um, Clear Talent, I mean, Commercial Talent um, okay. Agency. And uh, she now does TV film with me and voiceover. So we now cover commercial, print, voiceover, and TV film. Um, and yeah, we do have- Amazing. All, we do have all divisions at DDO as a whole. We do have adults, we have stage, we have adult voiceover, adult commercial, adult TV film. Um, and then we also have a New York office and a Chicago office as well. That is incredible. And all this, were you at the very beginning of DDO? Has DDO just been here for seven years or has this been a longer situation? Mm -hmm. um, no, DDO opened in 1969. So it's oh, been- Hi, hi. Yes, yeah. I guess um, it's so been a little longer than seven years. <laughs> a little longer than seven years. Um, Dorothy Day Otis was the original owner. Oh, yes. Dorothy Day Otis. Of course. Yep. yep that's us. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. So that's amazing. I wanted to address the difference between dealing as an agent for adult actors versus dealing with an agent for kids. And what are the age range? What defines kids uh, category from you? Age to age. And how do you navigate through it? Because a lot of the time you have to navigate with the parents. So let's address that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a lot of things are very different, um, repping children versus, versus adults. Um, and we don't have a hard cutoff on age. So it's more about what the actor can play. We do have actors that are over 18, but as long as they can play high school, college age, mm -hmm. then they can still be a part of our division. Um, and then we kind of assess from there. If someone is kind of aging out for us and we feel like we're not covering the roles that they need to be covered for, then we sometimes we graduate them to our adult department. Sometimes we share them with the adult department for a little bit where we both represent them. They represent them for the older roles. We rep them for the younger roles. Mm -hmm. um, so it can go a variety of different ways. But um, when we are looking, when we're meeting new clients, we're looking for definitely we're still looking for 18 to play younger. Um, but if you are like a solid twenties and you can go into your, th into playing thirties, then you're probably best for an adult division. But there are people out there, shockingly enough, we have a 30 year old client who literally looks 16. Mm -hmm. um, casting asks us for his work permit. Every time we book him, casting asks us who's going to take him to set. We've been asked if he has a driver's license. I mean, all of that and no one believes i one time i pitched him for like a 20 year old role and they were like he plays way too young and he's 30 <laughs> years old and married and so it's just too funny but so for his case he needs to be with the youth division because he wouldn't be able to you know he would be it would be a disservice to him if he was with an adult division so 
it all depends on the actor and what they can play as far as the the top of the age mm -hmm. and then for the younger kiddos we we normally our sweet spot to start them is six yeah, um, they can read. Is that why? Because yeah, they, yeah, they exactly. And also for the the set laws. So as soon as they turn six, they can actually work a full day on set. They can work like a six hour day on set. Oh. Um, so it's very hard. A lot of times on breakdowns, you'll see it'll say like it'll be a role for a seven year old or even an eight year old. And it will say like, um, you know, or I mean, it'll be a role for a four or five year old and it will say six to play five or six right, to play right. four because what happens what what's the what what happens just because they want the, them to be able to read or an age cuts off hours you're allowed to work yeah an age cut off with the hours you're allowed to work oh. so as soon as they turn six there's a big jump in the hours they're allowed to work and then they can basically work a full day um with schooling and stuff and obviously breaks but they it's much easier for production to hire a small six-year-old to play right. four um, so that's what they typically do. So it's pretty hard to, there's just for us, it's inconsistent work for the toddlers and, and there's not a lot out there. There are other agencies, I think that like specialize in like the toddler print stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, that's just not what we do. We focus on, on camera. So we start at about six. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. Cause I used to coach. I mean, I'm not used to coach. I have coached now the president of the Screen Actors Guild, Gabrielle Carteris. So she would tell us the stories of her playing, you know, on 90210 and being so much older and playing, yeah. playing younger. So yeah. it's, a, it's a real plus. It's a real yes, plus absolutely. when you can play, play younger. However, I find that sometimes people look a lot younger, but their soul is so much older that it becomes a little tricky situation. Do you find that? Yeah, that definitely happens too. If the, if the actor looks a lot younger, they have to really know how to like turn it on and play younger. And some, some can't, some, they're just, their old soul, soul comes through and it's, it's not believable, mm -hmm. but some of them it's very believable. So yeah, they just have to kind of, um, it does just depends on a case by case basis, but yeah. So if a six to eight year old or even a six to seven year old comes into your office to audition for you, what, to, what do you expect? And what, what should the parents listening expect? And then we'll talk about the older kids when they come in. Yeah, for six year olds, we're really looking for that personality. Are they outgoing? Will they talk to strangers? I think that's a big one. They have to be able to talk to us without the parent in the room. Um, and we do have them do that. You know, this is all pre COVID. Yes, of course. Um, We're talking pre-COVID, yes. yes. But then we'll talk about COVID too, because I'm sure you're doing meetings on Zoom, but we'll get yes. to that. Um, Pre-COVID, we would have the kid read and we would chat with the child before the parent came into the room. And so that way we could see <clears throat> A lot of that, what we're looking for at the six is, can they have a conversation with us? Do they have that confidence where they're not scared to talk to adults? Mm -hmm. um, also, can they follow direction? You know, there are sometimes we'll get a six-year-old who's running all over the room and can't sit down. And, and so that's obviously something that's probably not going to work on set. Mm -hmm. And then also, does the child actually want to do it? Um, and usually a six-year-old will be very honest with us if their parent yeah. is not in the room. Yeah. And so we will just ask them like flat out, why did you start doing acting? Why do you want to be an actor? Do you like auditioning? Um, and we'll usually get very honest answers. And sometimes they say no, that they hate it, you know? Um, and so then- God, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but I, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes they're like, no, mommy makes me do it, but then I get ice cream. And I'm like, okay, you know? So, Good to um, Good to know. Sometimes, yeah, exactly. So if they don't really want to do it, we never, you know, sign those those kids because we just don't want to put them in that situation. And it's so, not so, going. But if those six year olds come in, do you have them read something? Do you have them improv something? What do you? What's the scenario? What would it look like? Yeah, we do. We do have them do. Normally, we would have them do like something memorized. They could bring in like a little memorized scene or commercial, mm -hmm. and we would tell them in advance, like when we schedule the meeting, so they had time. Um, right. and then we even have like little cold reads that we have kids do as well sometimes to test their cold reading skills. Huh. Um, and shockingly, there are definitely six year olds that can cold read as well. That's, that is shocking. That's amazing. Although I will say we have a little girl, she started at my, at the studio at four and one of my teachers started training her in Shakespeare 
at four. Wow. Yeah. So she knew, she understand, she understood just breaking down scripts so much easier starting there. And she's gone on to the starring opposite Eva Longoria at six. So I think, you know, it's crazy, but at, at the studio too, we like to start at five or six when they have a little bit more of um, focus. But this girl, you know, there's always a special, the yep. special few that come in that just have a natural yep. um, confidence and energy and ability to understand story. Yep. Okay, so they come in and they're six, they do that. Is there any difference when um, uh, eight and up to 18 years old, do you get recommendations? Do you see, do you look at people's Instagram? What's your process to finding new actors? Yeah, I mean, I think just the older they are, the more, the higher level kind of we expect when we watch them. Um, the older they are, then we prefer them to do an actual scene versus a monologue or a cold read. Um, and then one of us will read with them and so that the other, the rest of us can really watch and see, can they actually listen? Are they actually reacting? Are they in the moment? You know, we wanna see like an actual scene. Um, I think it's harder for me at least to tell, you know, with a monologue, but obviously that's better for the younger kids. Um, yeah. But for the older kids, I like to see a scene. And um, yeah, we take a lot of our, you know, meetings are recommendations from managers, recommendations from casting sometimes. Um, sometimes from acting coaches. Yeah, definitely referrals. Absolutely. Um, and then we check all of our submissions from our website. So people submit can um, submit online to our website and we do check those. We don't check them, you know, we try to check them every couple days. Um, sometimes we check them every day. It just depends on how busy the day is. Um, what is that email? Let me interject that. What's that email? Um, it's kids. Let me make sure I have it correct off the uh -huh. top of my head. I think it's kids submissions at ddoagency.com. Okay. Um, but it's on our, like, if you go to the DDO website, it'll tell you all the submission emails for each department. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so we check those. And if we see, you know, a type that we need, or we see someone that sparks our eye, then we will, you know, start corresponding and see where they're located. If they're available, have them send us footage. If they didn't send us footage. And then we definitely have taken many meetings from just our submissions. Okay. That's amazing. So what is it about an actor when they walk into your room that closes the deal for you? That makes you go, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta have those people. Um, some of it, you know, is that like the star factor that, that, um, that thing you can't explain where, you know, they just have it, you know, it's, it's harder to explain on some of them where you just see, you see that potential in them. Um, Mm -hmm. And they're charming. They kind of have the whole package. They have a confidence. I think a lot of what it is, is like being comfortable, very comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of actors of all ages, when they come into an agent meeting, you can kind of, you know, sense the nerves on them, or you can sense the insecurities. And that's, uh, that's the kind of thing that, you, that they have to work on it. And that's what shows in, in the casting office as well. Um, but when an actor is just very confident, not cocky, but very comfortable and confident, it's like, they don't have that desperation. Yeah. That's like the sweet spot. Um, yeah. so some of it is that, and then a lot of it for us, because we do work with kids is, is parent stuff, you know, are they committed? Do they understand just can someone take them to all of these auditions? Okay, let me ask you something. Let me ask you about that. So if you meet the kid and you like the child, do you have a separate meeting with the parents to see if you can vibe with them to see where they're at? Because there could be a lot of hassle in that area. It could be yeah. positive and it could be negative. So what do you do in that? Yeah, well, that's a big part of it for us. We, we, we do meet the kid by themselves first and then we have the parent come in afterward. Uh -huh. And then we talk to the parent for like the second half of the meeting for a long time um, and to tr really feel the parent out. And if the parent doesn't seem like it's a good match for us, then we won't sign the kid. And sometimes we do like the kid, but we don't like the parent and we, you know. What? Are there set questions that you ask? And if any parents are listening, are there set um, personality things that parents should be aware of when they're in the room because they're helping close the deal as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we ask a lot about, you know, availability and commitment. Are you, you know, does it, 
are they in classes? Are they willing to be in classes? Are they willing to get coached for their auditions? Mm -hmm. Can someone take them to all these auditions? Is there a parent that can drop everything and be on set with them mm. all day if they book tomorrow? You know, mm -hmm. and some families that's just not realistic and mm -hmm. it's not possible. And I totally understand that. But unfortunately for this industry, you have to have that. Um, or it has to be at least a family member, someone, you know, grandma can take them to set or something. Yeah. Um, so looking to make sure they have all of those, um, you know, they have the support that they'll actually be able to do it and that we can kind of count on them. Yeah. Um, and knowing that the parent takes it seriously, you know what I mean? And they understand that it is going to be hard work. I think sometimes parents come in and they just think like, oh, my kid just, you know, as, as soon as my child signs with an, with an agent, they're discovered and they're going to be a star. And the next yeah. thing will be right on TV, right? Like when's their next TV yeah. role? Yes. And so I think knowledge of the industry helps a lot. If you are a parent who has a child that wants to get into it, I think you really need to do re some research on your own to know what you're getting into and understand how it works a little bit. So you're not completely clueless of the entire it's important um, for parents not to be crazy neurotic about it though more excited than their child is does do you, does exactly. that ever resonate with you that parents come in and they're just so eager that you're like red flag and this is not going to be healthy for the child yeah absolutely um i mean it's the classic like stage mom or stage yeah. dad where mm -hmm. it seems like they're living vicariously through the child or they're yeah they're, if they're more excited than the child or Sometimes we see like a parent putting pressure on a child, you know, mm -hmm. to, um, yeah, or they're really stressing about whether they're booking or not booking and why, and, you know, um, yeah, it should be fun for the child and the parent should just be there to be the supportive support, but not like a helicopter. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> helicopter because we have a youth department at my acting studio so I see it and I you know I see what you must go through and for me I think all the kids that are becoming young actors should absolutely look at it as fun and play and not stress at all because it is so hard to book a role and these kids they could give the best audition of their life and never hear a thing because it's all, it has so much more, you know, matching families and age, yes. looking. I mean, so <laughs> many things go into it um, that it could, it's kind of heartbreaking, you know? It's very heartbreaking. So, yeah, so that's why I think, I hope, and I'm sure you do, you instill that fun factor and live a full life and don't throw all your cards in that you're starting acting, you know? Because don't you find that some kids can, can have auditions for over a year and never book? And then maybe book a couple. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and that, exactly what you said is 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 correct. It's it doesn't, and that's what parents have a really hard time understanding. Mm. They think, you know, we're doing everything right. We're making all of our auditions. We're coaching on everything. My kid is good. There has to be a reason why they're not booking, but yeah, that's not how it works, you know. And they want to know the answers. Why aren't they booking? Why aren't they booking? We're doing everything, and it's like. It's, it doesn't just automatically equate. There's a lot of people that are out there that are also doing all the right things that are also yeah. very good. It's yeah. just a very oversaturated thing. I mean, it's like saying, you know, my kid's great at football. My kid's great at football. Why isn't he in the, in the NFL? Yeah. It's like, because what you're trying to do is like the percentage is like 1%. What you're trying to do is to jump into the 1%. It is, it is it's not um, gonna just automatically, You there's no guarantee. There's just no guarantee. It's not like I go to law school, I'm gonna get my law degree and then I get to become a lawyer if I pass yeah. the bar. Right. It's an automatic track, at least you know, but that's not how it is. There is no guarantee and there are so many, it's very frustrating for us too. There's so many of our clients that we are like, they are phenomenal. How yes. are they not booked yet? How? Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, there's a lot of phenomenal actors out here too. It's just really, and like you said, all these other things come into play, the matching, the types, the heights, the hair, yeah. it, it gets so detailed and they have, you know, the networks can, they have the luxury of being that specific and you just don't know what, uh, so many people have to weigh in on the decision that oh. comes down to stuff that has no bearing on their talent whatsoever. You Not know? whatsoever nothing so please parents listening out there and kids 
that are doing it out there, please have fun and parents don't stress. It is so, you know, out of your control whether you're going to book something or not. Yeah. So when parent, when kids sign with you, how, what is the communication, the importance of communication with you as an agent? Because I think a lot of people get managers so they can call the managers all the time and you don't want to be bombarded, but you do want to have communication. So I, I would think you don't want people calling going, hey, what's happening? Because to me, that is like, wow, ouch. We know what's happening. We know yeah. what you want. So how, when, when um, clients um, communicate with you, how is it best to move action forward without feeling like a pest? without asking silly questions that are making you feel like you're not doing your job. Yeah, I think there's definitely a, a, a happy medium for communication. And um, we definitely, you know, we definitely, like you said, we're not, we're, we're not wanting people to just call and say, Hey, what's up <laughs> for my kid this week? You know, we have yeah. a lot of clients where we're working our butts off all day, every day on their behalf. That's literally all we do. Um, but I understand it, it's very interesting when, you know, there's an agent client disconnect, right? The agent feels like we know all of our clients so well because we stare at you guys all yeah. day, every day. All I'm doing is staring at your face. I have memorized your life. I know all yeah. your skills. I know your sizes. I'm talking about you all day. I'm staring at you all day. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, you're constantly on my mind. But if you're a client at home, you know, you don't see me that they're not thinking of me or and, and not seeing what I'm doing all day. So it feels more distant to them. You know, they yeah. think we don't have this close relationship where we're like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, no, we're best friends. I see yeah. you a million times a day. Um, <laughs> so I understand that that's it's different when you're on the other end as a client. You're like, hey, I, I don't know if you remember you're me. But that's, me. Yeah. Yeah. But for us, it's like, oh, it's impossible. We we literally stare at you all day. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, but there's also a, a big problem that we run into is lack of communication, right? So mm -hmm. people that, um, you know, go out of town without telling us or, you know, cut all their hair off without telling us or they've grown six inches and they don't tell us. So there are things you really need to communicate and sending your agents an update every so often, if you actually have new information for us is fantastic. Right. If you have new information, send us an update, say, hey, these are the classes I've been taking. I tried this, this is where I've been coaching. You know, I did this um, and yeah. I've also been, you know, doing a new skill or give us that type of information, absolutely. Um, and I think it's okay to check in every once in a while, you know, and you should check in, especially when you have new information to share. I think, um, you know, definitely what you don't want to do is like call your agent. Like, hey, did I get submitted for this? Did I get submitted for this? That kind of thing. Cause what does that do for you psychologically? Does that put, put them on the bottom of the list as the pesty actors or it, does it, does it create a mistrust? Does it, what happens? I think it's just, um, you know, it depends. They just never know what has happened in our day that day, right? And yeah. I think in general, you have to trust who you're signed with. Yeah. Um, and you have to trust that we're doing, again, we only make money if you guys make money. That is what like it all comes down to. We are not making money. If you think about it, there's clients that we've made $0. So we're not being paid by you for years and years and years. But if we believe in you, we've been working for you for free for years. You know, we haven't gotten any money for that. We are literally putting our work on the line every day, you know, because we believe in you and for nothing really until you book in the hopes that you book one day. And look, um, can I just interject to that? Because what if you do have a client for a year and they're not booking? Do you lose faith or do you look at their tapes? Are you talking to casting directors pre-COVID when people were going in? Are you keeping abreast of the quality of their work? Yeah, so we watch every single self tape that we get, which is a lot wow. of what we do. Wow. Um, so we are very aware of where they're at. So if someone hasn't booked for a year, even longer, but we are seeing that they are consistently and they're confirming all their auditions, they're coaching, they're doing everything right, they have great headshots, and all their tapes are great, like we're not going to drop that client or anything like that. We will continue the fight. Like if we believe in you, we believe in you. But if there's another client that is 
their headshots are three years old. They're not really responding to our emails. They don't, they cancel a lot of auditions. They're not in classes and then they're not booking for a year. Then yeah. yeah. It's time to move on. What is the perfect looking client? And you've kind of addressed it, but I just want you to sort of say it. The client who responds right away, who shows up on time. Let, let me hear it from you so I don't feed you my dialogue. <laughs> yeah, I mean. We're pretty much on the same page, but yes. Um, confirms for all their audition and confirms in a timely manner. Um, mm -hmm. Answers all their emails quickly. You know, it's easy to get a hold of, has, is available. Um, always books out if they aren't going to be available. Mm -hmm. um, consistently gets new headshots, you know, once a year or so without us having to like ask or without us having to hunt you down for the new headshots. Um, you know, is consistently training, consistently in classes, consistently coaching for their big auditions. Um, yeah. And, and I just think being grateful is always really nice. I mean, we have clients that we just, I mean, it's nice for us, you know, to just, if someone's just like, thank you so much, or, or you can tell when someone, um, appreciative. Yeah. When they appreciate the auditions, you can tell. And there's others that are, seem like we're bothering them by sending what? them, auditions, you know, no way. Do people actually come off that way? Yeah. Sometimes that Some people, blows my mind. Yeah. So a lot of people, you'd be surprised a lot. Some people want to pass on a lot of stuff, which, Hey, it's okay. Absolutely. We're always in support of passing. If it's a content issue or something, the actor is uncomfortable with. Right. Um, and we don't submit on anything. You know, we don't submit on like under fives. We don't submit on background. Obviously we don't submit on like something that would be a super low quality project. We're, we're only submitting on TV film, the legitimate stuff. Um, but yeah, there's, it's very interesting. There's just certain, sometimes we'll get clients that just want to find, it's like they want to find a reason to pass on everything or wow, that they're totally too busy. Blows. So they're just like, not, I think sometimes there's some families where they signed up for this, but now they're realizing they're way too overwhelmed and busy. And so when they get an audition, it's like stressful for them. And it's like a drag. It's like, Oh yeah. shoot. How am I going to figure this out? Yeah. Versus like, Oh, amazing. Thank you for this opportunity. It's more like, oh, okay, do we have to? Oh, obviously that's never a great feeling for us. So that, that's, I just, that's shocking to me because if you get into this business, you have to want it mm -hmm. more than anything. And you have to set your schedule and your lifestyle has to adhere to all the things that go on, which is having new headshots, being in those classes. I'm just reiterating for everybody and to having that availability and the time that's not going to stress you to take a couple hours to work on your material, to take a couple hours to get to and fro from your appointment. So it is a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that you see as you sign people, you have to weed out those that aren't as committed as others because you are working for free. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, yeah, it, it, it's very interesting. I think, um, I think it happens more with kids maybe than adults. I think a lot of adults are, you know, they're working their, you know, restaurant oh, yeah. job. They're working their yeah. Uber, they're postmating, they're doing all of this because they know they have to drop everything for an audition. But I think parents with their children, they're like, oh, my kid's a star. Aren't you going to discover them and put them on a Gerber bottle? Yes. And they don't realize that they are going to have to do a lot. It's actually quite a bit of work, but since it's not them, it's their child, I think it's easier for them to not understand how much work it's going to be yeah. um, and what a big commitment it really is. So it's pretty tough to get feedback on an initial audition. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't like to bother casting on asking for feedback with an initial audition, just because um, I remember when I was a casting assistant and people calling me for feedback off of an initial audition was like the bane of my existence. It was like, I didn't have time to go digging through Harriet's notes to find. And it's like, you know, so it's hard. The, the assistants and the associates, they're, you know, getting their butts kicked and they're in the weeds and they're, they're, it's hard to give, they can't, they wouldn't have time to call every agent and give feedback to every person they audition. It's just impossible. So we usually say, you know, if you just had a first call, you know, your a callback will be your feedback. Like if you got a callback, you did a great job. That's your feedback. Yeah. Um, 
you know, <clears throat> unfortunately, the name of the game is that you're not going to get feedback for all of your auditions. That's just not, it's not realistic and it's not how it works. But after every callback, we definitely, if it gets further along, then that's when we definitely start pushing for feedback and asking if they got a callback or they went to producer session or anything like that, then we'll definitely be asking for feedback. But again, even then, even when we ask for feedback off of like a, a producer session, you'd be, I would say at least 60% of the time, the answer is like, they did great. The produ producers went in a different direction. They did great. We went a different direction. They, you know, I mean, it's almost always. You can't get specific feedback. So I think, I think the importance is, is that every kid should not do it to get the job. I think they should do it because they love acting and they love storytelling and they figured out the best way for their personality to tell that story, mm -hmm. go in there or put yourself on tape and then let it go. Yep. And I we, since we watch all the tapes, we will get feedback on the tape. If we felt oh. like the tape wasn't good, we won't send it in. Oh. Um, we will tell, we'll redirect the actor and say, hey, give this another try, you know, this is what needs to, you know, please be more off book or do That's this, step, you know, stuff That's like that. So we'll direct them yeah. and then have them. So if people, we always tell our clients, like if we didn't have you redo your tape, then we think it was good enough. We think it's, you did great. We're going to send it to casting, mm -hmm. but we absolutely, you know, pretty often have people retape. Tell us about your days in casting because I don't really know you and now I'm getting to know you and that's the benefit for me doing my podcast because I get to know you as well. So you just told me you were a casting assistant or associate for Hair at Greenspan, who I love. Uh, and who else was it? Tell us. Um, so yeah, I started doing, um, I was a casting assistant for Terry Burland, mm. um, which at the time she was doing commercials and voiceover. Um, so I was assisting her and had a blast. It was wild. It was like my first in, you know, first job in the industry. And uh, yeah, I loved it. I loved like the fast pace of it all. I loved, you know, getting to see the actors come in, getting to see the actors read. I think for me, I realized, um, you know, after doing that, that I really wanted to see what the TV film side of it was. I saw how, um, yeah, I wanted to see a little bit more, like I wanted to see longer scenes, the actors do more. I wanted to see it like a little bit more creative. Um, so that's what made me interested into jumping to the TV film side of it. And that's how I met Harriet because her and Terry know each other and go way back. And so then I worked with Harriet on a Disney pilot. And that's when I started getting to be in the room when she was reading all these kids um, and sometimes I was the reader, sometimes I was running the camera, sometimes I was working the lobby, I was just whatever was needed that day, it changed every day, but that's when I fell in love with kids, I was blown away, and that's when I really saw how good these kids could be, that's when I saw, oh my yeah. god, they can be just as good or better than adult actors, Yeah, and I feel like people don't understand that part of it too, it's like, no, the level of of kids that are booking they're as good as the adults that are series regulars on tv they're insane they're amazing yeah and so you know it's not all just cutesy kids like you can work it, it's like you know they're they're amazing and they can be absolutely phenomenal so yeah i fell in love with it and then um our pilot didn't get picked up so it's i might be in casting to this day if our pilot had gone but it didn't get oh. picked up Everything I was out of a job and I was uh, like fresh out of college, broke, working like five jobs, you know, trying to make ends meet. I had student loans and I was trying to wait for Harriet to get her next job, but she didn't have a next, it, she wasn't working back to back. She like, you know, took some time, Right. It, you know, like, I think it was like several months had gone by and I like, couldn't wait anymore. I needed work yeah. and kind of was realizing like, I don't have the luxury of being an independent contractor right now. Like I didn't have the money to do it. And so I thought if I could just, if I could find something that was stable, but also still work with kids in this industry, like that's what I would want to do. And so that's what made me apply to DDO. And you just applied and you got the job. Yeah. I mean, obviously I went through a whole process, but yeah, I did. I got, um, it was, it was very like, meant to be as soon as I came into for the interview I remember thinking like oh I want to work here like I just ah. I, 
I fell in love with like the partners and the people here and the vibe of um, the company. Um, and yeah. That's so incredible. What is some advice that you would like to give to the kids and then to the parents? Three things of each before we close out. Yeah, ooh, three, this is good. Yeah. Um, I think to the kids, mm -hmm. just, just have fun and be yourself. That is, that is such mm -hmm. a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Know that you are amazing. Know that we believe in you. Know that you do have something special but it's okay. Just you have to forget about your auditions after you do them, have a blast, mm -hmm. you know, go do as much as you can for those auditions. You know, you really want to prepare and read the entire script and get into the character and develop a character, make bold choices. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I see is a lot of people just, they only do what's on the page mm. and we need you to do, you know, the writers have already written that part, yes. you know, that part's already done. So that's actually not your job. The job of your job is the rest of the page, the white space on the page that you have to fill in and bring out, bring that to life. The writers already wrote the words. So the words are actually the least of our concerns. It's yeah. the rest of it that you have to bring. Um, and that's what you're being paid to do. You know, if you book a role. So I think, you know, Give have fun. Be prepared. One, one more thing. Um, and just continue to have a full life outside of the entertainment industry. I think that really comes into play when you can tell that it's a whole happy kid that also has other hobbies that, you know, is, is doing other things. Your whole life should not be just this. And I think it has changed so much. Like years ago, kids felt like they had to put on for Nickelodeon and put on for Disney. The industry has changed tremendously and is the core truth of who you are as individuals that need to shine through. Yeah. And the pacing might be different, whether it's multi-cam or single yep. cam or drama, but the truthfulness has to be there. Yep, absolutely. 100%. Okay, what's your advice to the parents? Parents, listen up. <laughs> um, my advice to the parents is, just let your kid, let your kid do it. Just support them, but don't try not to get so invested in whether they're booking or not and why. It, there's nothing that you need to fix. I think that's what, that my biggest message to parents is like, there's nothing that you need to fix. I think you, it's natural for you to feel protective and that you want to jump in and why aren't they booking and you want to fix it for them but there isn't anything to fix. You just got to let them go on their auditions, encourage them to have fun at their auditions. That is the majority of their job is auditioning. You know, as an actor, their, their career is going to be 80% auditioning, maybe 20% on set. So they have to actually enjoy auditioning if they want to do this as a career. And that's the part they should be enjoying because that's the most of it. Um, so encourage your kids to enjoy auditioning. Um, try you know, to let go and just let them have fun. And it's like, you're taking them to soccer practice. You just take them and you pick them up, but you don't need to go and figure out why, you know, step in and get on the field. Um, so I would say like, let go, let them have yeah. fun. Um, encourage them to have fun at their auditions. Um, don't and direct them. Don't direct them. Don't coach them. Never coach them. Never coach them. Never, no. coach them. never, <laughs> never, never. Um, I think that's really important to yell that out again, because yes, when the parents are giving the direction, it's just going to ruin the performance, no matter what. Yep. hundred percent. Um, and yeah, just, just support them and trust, trust your reps. We, if we have your kids signed, we absolutely adore them and we completely believe in them and we're doing everything we can on our end. And so just for you, your part is just, you know, encouraging them and being proud of them no matter what. And booking is not the end all be all. They, you should be proud of them just for the auditions yeah. um, and supporting them. And give positive feedback always. Yep. I, think, yep. I think the parents have to build their self-esteem no matter what. Yep. Now, let me just sidetrack before we close out, because we didn't address the Coogan accounts 
the um, the um, I don't know the things that you need. What do what do kids need? The parents who are listening, what do they need to prepare before they get an agent or when they get an agent? What do they need? Yeah, so they definitely need a work permit. That's the first thing that they need, and that's the most urgent. Um, after that, they will need a Coogan account before they can work, but that's a, easier to get last minute. So, and there are banks that will tell you that you have to book a job before you can open the Coogan account. So that's fine. You can get that as soon as you book and as long as you go like right away. Um, but yeah, well, Coogan account. Me, well, hold on one second. So to get a, a work permit, what do they have to do and how long does it usually take? So the work permit, they right now, they have to do it all online. Um, and depending on their age, they have to usually have something signed off from their school saying that their grades are good enough um, and their principal is okay with them auditioning, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to just fill out all the paperwork online and that's it. It doesn't cost them anything. Um, it lasts for six months. It expires every six months and they have to continue to renew and they have to continue to turn their grades in. And what, um, if you're going in person, where do you, where do you go? Um, you would go to the labor board office. We always tell our kids, like there's a labor board office in Van Nuys. Yes. That's like the most popular one. Um, but right now, obviously they're closed for in-person. So everything is online. Right. Um, what they're looking at is, um, you know, you have to, you have to upload some records of your child, but then they're looking at a t school attendance mm -hmm. and that the school is, is fine with their attendance. Um, records and then their grades. And a Coogan account, I know what a Coogan account is, but what is a Coogan account and why did it come into being? It's named after for a particular yeah. reason. Yeah, so it is, um, it's a California state law mm -hmm. and it is a type of blocked trust account mm -hmm. that a child has to have um, and 15% of their earnings of whatever they make doing this business, whatever they book, 15% of their money will go into this account. Um, and that's by law. And no one can touch that money except for the child and once they turn 18. So it's yeah. a block trust. It opens up only to the child when they turn 18. So 15% of what they make will go into that account. And then the rest will go to the parents, you know, to divvy up however much they want. And, you know, it's kind of up to a parent. They can put more into that account than 15% if they want. You can put all of their checks in there if you want. You know, if you want to have a separate savings account for them, like maybe they will, they're going to want a car with their um, commercial money when they turn 16. Yeah. So they wouldn't be able to use their Coogan money because that will be blocked until the 18. So if you want to have a separate savings account for them, you can um, for stuff that's more immediately accessible. And, and the Coogan, um, Coogan account was established to protect children because yeah. I think they found in the past that parents were taking all the money. Not that I'm saying any of the parents out there are gonna do that because right. times have changed, but this is why it was established. Okay, work permit, Coogan account, anything else besides pictures, resumes, and all the, the normal things? Yeah, pictures, resumes, training. Um, they're gonna have to set up their online casting sites, you know, and fill out their sizes, their profiles on LA Casting, Casting Frontier, yeah. Actors Access. Those are the three main ones. Um, and yeah, okay. I think that's it. Headshots, definitely headshots. Um, and then they can get all recommendations from you when you choose them. But you know, and sometimes when when clients come in to meet you and you don't sign them, can they revisit that meeting a year later? Oh, definitely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. we we definitely we've met with people multiple times before in the past, and sometimes sign them after the second time we met them um, because our roster changes too. So sometimes we meet someone and. They just are very similar to another client that we have. And so we don't feel right about signing them at that time. But then our roster is constantly changing. Then in a couple of years, you know, maybe we have room for you now because people have changed their ages and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, or maybe that kid that was very similar to you is now on a series regular. So, you know, they're not as available. Right. And do you do theatrical and commercial or are you just theatrical or you're just commercial? So in our division, we have everything, voiceover, print, commercial, right. TV, film. Um, and I like oversee the youth division, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I only work on TV, film. Great. You seem awesome. It seems like the company is really open and loose and friendly and, and creative. And that's what, that's what I resonate towards. Because I think you have to have that as your support because you're in a creative industry. Right, right. 
you need to have it. So if young actors want to submit to you after hearing this or you know, get recommended so that you want them to go to the DDO, it, what was it again, one more time? Yeah, our website is ddoagency.com. And there's a whole um, submissions page and it will tell you where to submit. I build what I believe our email is kidssubmissions at ddoagency.com. Thank you so much for coming on, hanging out, giving back. I love working with a lot of the kids that you send over to the studio. It's amazing. Guys, stay strong out there. Keep your training. Be dirty, be aggressive, like I always say. Have a great week ahead. Laura, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.